The Ultimate Iron Man, the hardest and most restricted game mode in old school RuneScape. No banking or trading other players. And after claiming the world record for fastest maxscape on a main account, I decided to step it up and speedrun max total on an Ultimate Iron Man. Just me and my inventory in a race against the clock. And the goal? 99 in all skills before the timer hits 2000 hours. This is the Ultimate Iron Man Maxcape speedrun any percent. Welcome back everybody to the series where we try to go fast without a bank. And a quick recap for the previous episode. We got solid work done for the foundation of the account in the form of getting to Fossil Island and unlocking the ability to use fairy rings. But I'm not really satisfied with what we have at the moment. And I would like to make some massive progress in this one to set up my account to actually start some skilling. It's another beautiful day to immerse myself into some runescape lore by holding down the spacebar. I'm currently doing all the quests that I can for farming XP. Farming is going to be very important on this account, but right now I'm like 17 farming and there isn't too much to plant other than an oak tree that literally gives 500 XP, so that is not really worth doing. So doing these quests early on really helps out with low level farming. And I also want to work on farming for something else. I want to get 60 attack to wield dragon weapons. But as you know by now, to do something efficiently on a UIM you have to do 73 other things first. So in order to get 60 attack I need to do desert treasure. Why? Well, more on that later. But for desert treasure I need to complete Temple of Eikov. And that quest has two obstacles actually. A hard requirement of 40 range, but I'll figure that out later on. And I need to hand over 20 unnoted limpered roots. But 20 of them is a bit too much to get from monster drops, as I would need to kill like 200 hobgoblins for that. So I want to get them via farming. But then again, getting limpered seeds is easier said than done. They are pretty common from some monsters, but not really anything I can kill right now due to Slayer. However, seed packs look like the best option right now. But you might have run the numbers already, and that I'm a bit short on farming levels to enter the farming guild to start doing contracts. So I did the quest Forgettable Tail and Garden of Tranquility to get me to 31 farming. And in the time I had to wait during these quests, I knocked out a couple other easy ones, Rest Before Disaster Pirate Pete and Evil Dave, Romeo and Juliet, and the Clock Tower. And next I did Death to the Drogenshun and bought the Bone Crossbow and some bolts to train a little bit of ranged. And after that I did the Chompy quest to get me to level 33 ranged. And then I went over to Zea and I went to the Shazian pub and bought a Lizard Kicker. Alright, raise your hand if you know what this item is and what it does. Because I was mind blown when I learned about this drink. It boosts your range level by 4. So I can boost to level 37 now. And it just so happens to be that you need level 37 range for Spirits of the Elite. So I quickly got the other requirements done too. And actually had a close fight with those golems. Because I don't have Tax on Melee yet. And boosted my range for this part. And that's an easy 8k prayer XP. I also completed every other quest that I could do for prayer XP, that being Mountain Daughter, Ghost Ahoy and Making History. And that gets me to 37 prayer for protect from magic. And a quick detour to Zea, because I need to have 35 farming before I do 43 prayer. And on Zea I completed the last house quests and the Garden of Death. Which is a very weird quest by the way. You just go in these scripts and type some words and then you get 10k farming XP. Like, okay. But at least I can pretty much do it zero time during a Tale of the Righteous. Which is the Shazian house quest. And the 10k XP is actually huge since it gets me over 35 farming. So I can plant teak trees now. And the reason why I want a 35 farming now is that I am going to death pile soon. So I can grab my teak seeds right away when I do that. And I will be deadpiling for using the wildy altar so I can only bring bones there and not risk all my items. But I was looking at which dragon to kill for the bones. Like ideally I want to kill green dragons because they have the lowest HP. But they are only in a wildy and I'm not gonna 
risk my Tome of Fire when I go there. Because I would still like to use my Tome of Fire in the future. So I decided to go to Blue Dragons instead. They have a bit more hit points over greens, but they are outside the worldy. So yeah, I can use the Tome of Fire there. But the only location with Blue Dragons I have unlocked right now is Teverly Dungeon. Which is like a 5 minute walk, so also not great. But then the Ogre Enclave caught my eye. It is pretty close to Castlewars, which I can easily access from Clan Wars. But I needed to complete the Watchtower quest to access the Ogre Enclave. And yes, for that quest you need... A Dragon Bone! So I went over to the Brimhaven Dungeon to kill a Red Dragon. And I went here because I still had to complete some Karamja Diary steps in the dungeon. And after a very sketchy Red Dragon kill, I could finally do the Watchtower quest. Alright, nice. That is the Watchtower quest done. And now it's time to clean out the inventory a little bit. So I have space for as many Dragon Bones as I need. So storing the coins in the LMS coffer and bagging the rest of the items I don't need for killing dragons. And from Clan Wars I can make my way over to Castle Wars and to the Ogre Enclave. In total I need like 40 Dragon Bones to get me from 37 to 43 Prayer with using the Wildy Altar. So... In two trips it should be very easy to complete. And having the Tome of Fire from Winterdot really helps out with this grind as I can hit 24s with Fire Blast now. That is the first trip done. Going over to Karamja to use my Tribesman Death Pile technique. And praying that I don't get attacked. I do have my Alts with me to scout but I've seen like 5 PKers when I was getting the bones so please just let me get lucky on this. Easy. First inventory done. No PKers. And I got 40 prayer during this inventory. Buying some dead runes for hopefully my final trip to the altar. <gasps> that could have easily killed me there. Only hit a 10 with melee, but he could easily have 35 me with his uh, drag of fire. Oh, and I also got a Mithril Axe. I guess I'm keeping this for Animal Magnetism in the future. And on my way to the altar for the final time. And the coast seems clear. Yeah. Oh, that was also a normal prayer person who probably also shit his pants. Nice, that's 43 prayer. And I didn't get PK'd, so that is a huge win. I was kind of nervous to do this, but um, yeah. We managed to get 43 prayer and protect some melee. So now we can knock out a bunch of quests that we couldn't do before. Getting 43 prayer took me around 45 minutes. And now after rebagging my items, we're gonna jump into some more LMS. Actually did this together with JCW for his normal Ironman speedrun. To get the both of us a rune pouch and some more rune arrows. The rune pouch is very important for ultimate Ironman. As it just frees up two inventory slots. Which is going to be very helpful for skilling. And for quests that require both teleport runes and a lot of items. Like one small favor for example. This quest is always so much more fun than I remember it being. And the reward is also very welcome. 20k Herblor XP. Already up to 40 Herblor and we have barely made any potions so far. Death piling and rebagging can be quite time consuming. So if possible I do multiple steps that require it at the same time. I have some Entrana quests coming soon. One of them being Hand to the Sand. But I kind of forgot that you need 49 crafting for that one. And training crafting is best done with a completely empty inventory. And I also had to do the Fremenic Trials quest. Which has two parts where you can't take any items with you. But my items will only stay on the ground for one hour. So I will probably have to reset my death pile at some point. After my first death pile I grabbed some coins from the LMS coffer. And bought runes to teleport to my POH which is in Rolaka. Then I did the Warrior and Seer parts of the Fremenic Trials quest. And then completed it. And then I made my way over to Port Fast Metis to train 49 crafting with the Blowing Glass method and running back to the charter ships. And that is 49 crafting. And I probably have like 50 minutes on my pile. But I also want to do Enlightened Journey while visiting Entrana. So after picking up my items I... Collected the items needed for Enlighted Journey and then that piled again. Enlighted Journey might be the most ultimate Ironman unfriendly quest there is. 
Firstly, it's all on Entrana. And second, you legit need to bring the guy like 40 unnoted items. So in the first trip, I bought the dice, papyrus, ball of wool, candle, tinderbox, and bought 10 empty sacks on the way there. And on Entrana, I made sure to talk to the guy for the hand in the sand quest. And after giving him those items I brought along, I stole 10 silk in Ardi, bought a bull in Felador, and gave him those as well. Already had the willow trees planted, so I could get my 12 branches. Quickly completed the hand in the sand quest. And then I chopped 10 normal logs and made my way over to Entrana again to board the balloon. No mistakes made, so that is Enlighted Journey completed and two more Entrana quests crossed off the list. While my inventory was relatively clean, I did a Sleeping Giants quest and I trained Smitting to level 49. And I did that by buying plate bodies at Varrock, then teleporting to the Giants Foundry and doing the minigame. I also have enough points stored for a couple Kovac Grogs to boost my Smitting level by 4 in the future. But why 49 smithing? Well, there is this quest called In Aid of the Myrarchy. And I was like, oh, easy quest. Hmm, that's a lot of items though, but it should be good. And then I saw the Iron Man concerns and it said 50 smithing for a mithril bar. So I was like, oh, man, not, not really used to being an Iron Man yet. So I trained to 49 smithing and then I did the Between a Rock quest for 5k smithing xp to get me to 50 and that quest also gave me a rune pickaxe which saves me some gp buying one both the between a rock and the family crest quest had a step in the dwarven mines so i multi quested that and completed the family crest quest also quickly did x marks the spot and cook's assistant on the speedrun worlds for the speedy teleport only had to get the platinum time for two quests and the speedrun worlds are also a separate profile, so my playtime didn't even go up. And now my minigame and home teleports are 4 ticks faster than the standard animation. The animation looks pretty cool. I should have really gotten this earlier, but oh well, at least I got it now. Completed the in aid of the Myrarchy. And made some energy pots with my noted Herolanders for Darkness of Hellovil. And this quest is the last quest I can do right now for thieving XP. Got me to 48 thieving, so I still need to do one level at blackjacking, because at level 49 I can do artifacts. Actually, kind of forgot that you needed a lockpick for artifacts, and it's not really easy to come by pre-50 thieving. So I got some help from some UAM gamers that scouted me a scavenger room as the first room at the chambers. And got a lockpick by killing a couple scavs. And doing artifacts pre-level 65 is much better thieving XP alone than blackjacking. So I made a bunch of dual rings and energy pots. And then just tallied to clan wars when I was low on rune energy. And teleported back with a memoirs book. And meanwhile I could just uh, elk my rune arrows from LMS. And I got around 150k thieving XP an hour. But stopping at level 65 for now. And now, the reason why I did all these quests is that I could start a Taste of Hope. Well, first I did a bunch of easy diaries and Tears of Guttics to get my Slayer level to 38. Because Slayer is very slow to train at the early levels when my combat is also very low. But the Taste of Hope boss fight is actually my first death bank. And what is a death bank, you might ask? Well, as an ultimate Iron Man, I cannot use a bank, but what I can do is let myself die in an instance that has an item retrieval interface. Some examples of those are Vorkat, Volcanic Mine and of course Hespori. But I don't have the requirements for those yet. So this is my first one, the fight against Renes Draken. And while my items are death banked, I can do certain activities more efficiently since I have all the inventory space in the world. However, if I die somewhere else again, Without reclaiming my items, all the items in the death bank will be deleted and that is called a wipe in the ultimate Iron Man dictionary. Which would just end my speedrun pretty much, so let's try to not do that. The first thing I'm going to do after death banking is getting a fighter torso. Since you cannot take a room pouch, even if it's empty, into barbarian assault, so I kinda had to death bank for that. 
I am accompanied by some very talented gamers from the BA Boost servers. Leeching Barbarian Assault saves you a lot of time and headaches from World 306. And these guys got me a fighter torso in just over 50 minutes, which is massive for the run, as the torso will be my best in slot for all Slayer training. I'm very happy with how quick and smooth this went. I could just sit back and relax while they did all the hard work, so I highly recommend you check out BA Boosts, and I left a link to their Discord in the description. And also the nice thing about a fighter torso is that you can just store it to the POH and get it back anytime you want. It is also possible to just only withdraw items that you need from my death bank and leaving the rest in there. So another thing that is good to do when death banked is room crafting. So I completed the Temple of the Eye quest and did one mass Garden of the Rift to get me to 35 room craft. Then I started What Lies Below and during this quest you have to go to the Chaos Altar to charge like the, the wand that you were given. So I did the quest up to that part and then I went back to Garnish of the Rift because going to the Chaos Altar is kind of spooky via the abyss. So I did Garnish of the Rift until the Chaos Altar opened up and I charged my staff in there which actually works which is kind of cool. Then finished the game and went back to finish the quest. Then I pulled up to the Rift with the boys and got my ass carried since I only have a small and medium pouch. But like half of your XP comes from the XP drop at the end. So having some gamers with a colossal pouch really speeds up the XP per hour. Compared to doing masses which take like 12 minutes per round where there are 50 people just AFK mining the fragments and one out of the five games just fails after mining for two minutes so the XP per hour was actually kind of cracked in small teams. Looted real quick when I hit 50 runecraft for the large pouch. And also unlocking the ability to repair my pouches at the NPC for one pearl per repair. According to the wiki it is 2.14 pearls per search from here. And with those pearls I can buy items from the shop. Main thing I am after right now is the ring of the elements as it has some very handy teleports on it. So I went a little bit over 66 runecrafts to make sure I had more than enough searches for 400 pearls. But you know me, I'm always lucky, so I pulled a lantern and sold that for 100 pearls. And also got a catalytic talisman for morning's end part 2. And I got super lucky on pearls in general, so I could buy the ring and still have like 90 searches left for when I get back to this place. That way I can just obtain my pouches from the rewards guardian and don't have to kill leeches for the pouches. Also got up to almost 47 mining and 55 crafting from doing Guardians of the Rift till level 66, so that is quite welcome as well. And for the loot of Guardians of the Rift, I got quite a decent amount of La runes and Nature runes from this, which I'm really happy about. And the rest of the runes are just gonna be sold, I think, to build my cash tag up again. Alright, little fast forward, I didn't really do too much interesting stuff after getting my items back again. Completed a couple quests, did some Zaya favors and got 70 cooking. But I finally made it into the farming guild, so the hunt for some limpert seeds will now begin. First contract, Nasturtiums. Quickly pickpocketed that one and logged out here and checked every growth cycle to prevent it from dying. Okay, let's see if our first seed pack is the one. No. Unlucky. Let's get another contract. Some rosemary. Can just quickly buy that one, so that is easy. The second contract also, no luck. Ooh, some dwell berries. That takes a little bit longer to grow, so I'm gonna do some other stuff in between when that one grows. Going to do Dragon Slayer 1, actually. I've been debating if I should do this quest or not, but yes, getting dragons as a slayer task sucks, but I don't really have a way of getting enough super strengths for early slayer training. And to get my hands on a dragon battle axe, I do need to complete this quest. And since I will be so low combat when starting slayer, I cannot even get assigned metal dragons until level 80 combat. So I made quick work of Elvark. And before returning to Oziac, I saw that my contract was ready, so I went over to the farming guild. Ooh, yes. 
five limb seeds. That should get me the 20 limpered roots needed for Temple of Ikov, hopefully. And I'm going to plant them at the Hosidius patch since they cannot die here. And I'm just gonna do something else IRL while I wait for all the seeds to be done. And I planted the last limpered seed at Caterpie to get a medium diary task. And now I have over 20 limpered roots so I can do Temple of Ikov. That was a huge cap actually. I still need 40 ranged. So I did contact and contact gives 2 times 7k XP on a combat skill. And I actually managed to not record the final part of the quest. So you guys just have to believe me that I put the boat of the lambs on a range to get to level 40. But that is Temple of Ikov done. And now it is time for Desert Treasure. Haha, <laughs> that was fake news too. Need to do a nuclear pass first. I actually fell a lot during this one, more than I would like to, so it kinda sucked. But we got it done in the end. But I do have to spend 200k on upgrading the Iban staff now for the Ardoin Medium Diary. Because if I drop it or destroy the staff now, I will have to pay 400k later to complete the step. To buy it back and to upgrade it. So there goes 200k. Kinda sucks, but yeah, it is what it is. Desert Treasure is quite a quest. You need 12 maze logs, which are in my looting bag. And it has a step on Entrana. Okay, you know the drill by now. Time to find some more quests that also have an Entrana step. And then Death Pile. This is going to be a huge big brain master plan with how many different Entrana things I'm doing at the same time. First we have Desert Treasure with blessing the silver pot. Then we have Hero's Quest with killing the Firebird. I also need to get a Draymond branch for Recipe for Disaster Zur Armic Fars. And I'm going to unlock all the balloon routes that I need. Wh what? Oh no. Oh no. I misclicked. Oh my god. Uh, yep. That happened. Time to chop some more logs and try again. Got all the Entrana steps done, including the balloon this time. So time to rebag. And that just leaves Monkey Madness 2 and Devious Mines as our only Entrana quest left. Finishing up Heroes Quest. And now I can start the Legends Quest for the Recipe for Disaster Zur Armic Fars part. And that is the evil chicken down. I have all the parts now to finish the quest. Just have to kill this black dragon. Hey! Ah! Okay, this may seem worse than it is. My items are still in Xeneris, so I will have to get a new Draymond Staff to get back there. And I'm pretty sure some of the quest items that I had on me are gone. But what happened was, when I equipped my Anti-Dragon Shield, I lost the ability to cast Fire Blast since no Fire Runes from the Tome. You can see it in the chat, not enough Fire Runes to cast this spell. So the Autocast went away, and when I equipped it again, and just left clicked attacked, I started running towards it. And yeah, the rest is history. I mean, he could have just hit me with melee, but I've been getting away with too much shit on this account already, so it was bound to happen at some point. Luckily, all my items were on the ground in Xeneris, so nothing important was lost, only the quest items. I had to go back to the Kazari jungle, and then I could complete the quest. Now it's time to knock out the big quests. Legends quest is up first. This one was actually kind of scary. Barely having any space for food. Because you need to bring so many items. And I'm pretty sure falling down this cliff can hit you for 40s. Which is not ideal when you're only 41 hit points. But we survived and claimed 120k Herblor XP. It's still such an insane reward man. I'm already 56 Herblore with making like 100 energy pots so far. Kind of crazy. Also 1337 total and 213 quest points already. Kind of beast. 
And quickly completing Zogar Flesh Eaters for the two Super Restores. They will come in handy for Desert Treasure. I was still holding on to the Blessed Pot we got for Desert Treasure, but finally using that now to clear some inventory space. And after dancing with Desus, I am not claiming the Blood Diamond yet to maximize my food supply for the other bosses and to reduce the chance of the stranger spawning on me. I was the most worried about the Ice Diamond, but I legit only used one Super Restore ship and three pieces of food on this guy. So yeah, that was uh, a little bit too easy almost. Also, the stranger just never spawned. That's also not happened ever to me when I did this quest. Anyway, that is Desert Treasure completed. Now it's time for another classic quest. I don't think I've done this one like this late into an account. I'm of course talking about Monkey Madness 1. Normally you just do this quest right away after doing Grand Tree. But there's a catch to this quest on Ultimate Iron Man. Due to limited inventory space, you cannot really keep the Grigri's or the Monkey Speak amulet. And getting those back is a huge pain. You basically have to redo the whole quest when you want to get those back. So I want to do the quest, the sub quest, and buy a Dragon Scimitar all in one go. So I collected 4 talismans from the Monkey Child. And then killed all the monkeys for their bones. And made all the Grigri's in one trip. That is the quest done and the XP on attack and defense. And that's the sub quest for RFD which is also the final one. So it's almost time for barrel gloves. But of course I did forget something. I was supposed to get 5 talisman and 2 sets of ninja monkey bones to store a ninja Grigory at Zuknog for monkey madness 2. Otherwise you have to redo all the steps for the amulet and Grigory when you want to do that quest. So I just did it right now when I still have all the items on me. But still, an extra trip to the tunnels, not ideal. I did buy a dragon scimitar but I cannot build it yet. But I think I can just mage all the bosses for barrel gloves. Okay, uh, I'm splashing an insane amount. This is not working. Time to bring out the big guns. Bought an agent staff, which is actually my best in slot melee weapon until 60 attack. Uh, yeah, this is just not happening. I know I should have deadpiled for this, for more food, but even then my DPS is just so bad on this guy. His defense is too much. Uh, I don't really know what to do now. I think I have to just get 60 attack to finish this first one. One of the things that do suck about a speedrun with in-game time is that you cannot really do afk melees. The raids are just not good enough to justify killing sand crabs. So I have to be creative here. I did still need to complete 100% Shazin favor. But then I was like, hmm, this is actually not bad combat XP. So what I did was I aggroed one normal gangster on my alt. And then all the gangsters would attack it, and I could just simply kill the gang boss for a 100% drop for intelligence. Which can be traded in for an XP tome worth around 1k XP in a combat skill. So this was actually quite decent XP, because I could just log out while waiting for another meeting to spawn. And after a couple meetings, I was 60 attack. And with 60 attack and a full inventory of supplies, it was actually very easy. And that is Recipe for Disaster done at 229 quest points. And for those that looked at the playtime, you might have noticed that it jumped like 10 hours. And that is because I did some other things in between that I will show you guys in the next video. So that makes the end stats a little awkward to show as well. So I'm actually not gonna do that. I'm sorry. But we went from just over 100 quest points to 229 and unlocked a bunch of items in one video so i hope you enjoyed it don't forget to leave a like and a comment and maybe even a sub if you're feeling generous but in the next video i will start slayer and work on my combat stats take care everybody